We call this segment Capital Spotlight. We talk with a member of the General Assembly about some of the things they've been working on. We catch them right before session, and you get a chance to know a little bit more about them in the process. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome back a gentleman we've talked to many times. He represents the city by the sea, Newport, our good friend, uh, Representative Marvin Abney. Representative, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Dave, and I must say that you are the voice of Rhode Island. Uh, we enjoy your work and your staff's work, keeping everybody informed. That's really important, so thank you again. Well, you folks got a lot going on, so you keep us pretty busy, and I know uh, it had to be particularly meaningful to you recently based on your military background. You had a very special guest from the Navy address the uh, House recently, uh, speak here about the importance of defense in our economy. Tell us about that. We had the uh, new commander of the Naval Station uh, uh, Newport here, and it was really important that he come and give an overview of what the Navy really means, uh, not only to the city of Newport, but to Rhode Island in general. He took a day out of his busy schedule to give us a briefing on uh, the impact, the, particularly the economic impact of the employees at the Navy base, what they do, give us a history. And that helps us a great deal because even though we're small geographically, Rhode Island is a very diverse state. And so it's good to know that on Aquidneck Island, we have this Navy base and the importance it is to our economy. Well, and everybody here certainly recognizes the importance. It's unfortunate that at one time, it was even more significant because we had more people involved in our military. Military. And, and that's an interesting question right now nationally because uh, the Pentagon is suggesting that we reduce the size of our uh, military. Do you care to weigh in on that particular uh, topic? Yeah, this is what's called the peace dividend. It happened uh, when I came to the military in the 1974, right after the Vietnam War. Uh, we always reduced the size of the military uh, because you just don't need as many people anymore and with technology. And that did happen to Newport and we lost uh, the huge Navy base that everybody was used to. So we have to recalibrate. Uh, but it's really important to understand the economic impact of, of what happens in cases like that because the, the defense industry in this state is a multi-billion dollar industry and uh, that's difficult to replace in the, in the no tough question. times that we're having. So it's important to know what that is. Uh, I'm also involved with the, def with the Rhode Island Defense Commission and we talk about how Rhode Island can benefit from the 17,000 plus people that work in the defense industry here. So it's important that the Navy base uh, is understood well. It's not just, again, for Quidnick Island, but for all of Rhode Island. Well, Representative Abney, you have a celebrated military background and uh, obviously are very much in tune with what's happening in our economy relative uh, to the military. Uh, you also have been working on some legislation, which I think is very novel, again, uh, dealing with another veterans issue. You'd like to see uh, veterans be able to have the day off on veterans Veterans Day. How is that progressing? Yes, yeah, pro progressing pretty good. What it is at this moment, it's a resolution that on Veterans Day, those men and women who are veterans who work for you, if they would ask you, can I be off to go to one of the veterans uh, organization things that we have in Newport, I think it's just a good thing to do. Uh, these men and women have fought long and hard, and there's not, we, we can't do enough for them. So we're going to work through all the issues of is this with or without pay, those sorts of things. But I think we can work through that. But I want the state to show its appreciation for the veterans that we have here. No question. And also, too, you've been working on some animal protection <laughs> uh, in legislation that will strengthen some of our existing laws. Tell our viewers about that, sir. Yeah, I get really angry sometimes uh, the way people treat animals. This particular bill uh, would allow people like police or firemen or the animal control individuals, if they see an animal that's locked and trapped in a car and have made a good faith effort to find the owner of that but cannot, it gives them the ability to go into that car or truck or whatever, get the animal out, let the owner know where it is, but there won't be any legal uh, ramifications to the people who do that. But again, I'm talking about police, fire, animal control individuals. And since I started working on that, that legislation, I have personally seen animals locked in cars, and it's just heartbreaking. 
housing. No question. You know, the responsibility should be upon us to make sure that we take care of animals. It, and not only that, we're just, I mean, it may be hard for some to realize, a few weeks away from nicer weather, that'll be prime time in your particular district. You'll have tourists from all over the world visiting your great community. And with that comes the hot weather, the humid weather, and it's particularly difficult on uh, our four-legged friends. It really is. And as I said, I've seen it myself this winter. I saw it just yesterday. These animals are stressed out. They're in cars, they're in trucks, barking to get out. And I know it seems like it's a small thing, but animals mean so much to all of us as citizens. And I just think it's the right thing to do uh, in this case. And I don't get mad about a lot of things, but I get mad about this well, one. Well, and, and they're literally part of the family. Representative Abney, I wish you the very best for the remainder of session, along with your colleagues in the House. Thank you so very much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with us. Thank you very much, Dave. And of course, we could not do it without you. Thank you so much for watching. We call it Capital Spotlight for Capital Television. I'm Dave Barber.